Welcome back to the channel, you guys. Welcome back. Uh, we got the Shrimp Outrigger on the block. This is part one to a little build series I'm doing on the Shrimp Outrigger. In this video, I'm basically going to introduce the boat to you, uh, go through the boat, show you everything about it. I've got a few clips of the build process. I'll show you guys kind of how it was constructed. And uh, today we're actually going to install, I'll show you guys how to install this wire steering linkage all right it's a three-part steering linkage and it's freaking awesome you guys uh so we'll basically be installing the rudder making the steering linkage and going through and basically showing you guys the boat thus far uh so stick around stick around you guys might as well you're here you're here Uh, real quick, I'll show you what we're going to be doing in this video. Uh, the boat actually came with this plastic rudder. Uh, we're not going to use that. That's what was included in the basic kit. Um, we're going to be using an offshore electrics, uh, all aluminum rudder. This is uh, the part number there. I'll have everything linked in the description that I'm using on the boat. Uh, we're going to be installing the rudder, the micro servo, and making this custom wire steering linkage using capillary tube and 0 0.032 music wire all right so we'll be doing that in the video let me show you electronics real fast we're going to be using 2200 spectrum smart packs 50c all right for the for the boat or uh, possibly 4s if i could find one i can shoehorn in there uh 90 amp fly color barely fits in the boat but it fits hopefully and this rocket 3400 kv 2968 brushless motor I uh, had to make a custom hatch to fit the brushless motor. The boat comes with just a plain flat hatch that wouldn't accommodate the motor. So I actually made my own. It turned out pretty good. It actually turned out pretty nice. Going to be using a, a water cooling cool coil because there's not enough room in the boat for a water jacket. It'll work. It'll work. Before we get started on the steering linkage, all right, I want to show you guys what the boat looked like mid-construction. All right, without the top of the tub on without the spots and top on so you guys can see what it looks like whenever you're ready to build your boat you'll kind of know what the inside the sponson looks like and everything it might help you guys out with your build it might be a long video so uh bear with me bear with me I, i've been working on this video for a few weeks so bear with me it's a it's a basic kit and it comes with uh uh basic instructions to say the least uh the the tub is the center part of the boat we got the sponsons here these are the boom tubes all right uh, basically the tub is pretty easy to put together you got the the inner skeletal system basically the two sides here and then you got the outside skins that go on the inner skeletal system you join the two sides together with the servo mount the motor mount and then there's a front bulkhead mount right here uh, I'd, I'd opted not to use the front bulkhead mount I just uh, it was just easier for me I actually broke it so <laughs> Uh, I ain't even gonna lie, but um, you basically put the sides together, you know, with, joined with the middle part here, glue the skins on, and then put the bottom section on. I basically got the the whole boat epoxied on the inside. I hadn't really done much on the outside, but the inside of the sponsons are 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 epoxied, basically waterproofed and ready to go. Uh, all we need to do is um, you know get everything prepped up on the inside before we put our top on and then we'll join the top later on uh the front of the boat the front of the boat is actually a few few pieces of balsa that they include in the kit that you just uh you know glue together up here and then you sand it to shape okay the sponsons um they were a little bit difficult uh but i mean it was pretty straightforward if you follow the directions actually we used a little piece of wooden dowel on all of my boom tubes I plugged up the end epoxied a little little slither of wooden dowel in the end of these brass tubes so water don't seep in in case the tape comes loose or something got foam in them and we're gonna epoxy them on install two turn fin brackets one on each sponson uh, these boats are made to go fast. They're made to go fast and they're made to make a hard right turn as fast as the boat will possibly freaking go in a turn. Uh, hence the reason why you have a turn fin on your right side to hold the boat down. Um, I'm going to tinker around. I've never run a, a rigger with two turn fins. So we're going to actually make two turn fins for the boat 
and uh, later on we'll try try it try it out. We'll see what the boat does with two turn fins opposed to just one turn fin. So I made these little turn fin brackets. I actually have a blind nut right here. I can pull that putty out, and um, I've got adjustability. All right. So uh, speaking of adjustability, um, I actually use the included boob tube retainers for my sponsons. Those allow you to move your sponsons in and out to uh, tune the boat for the best ride, basically. I was going to use carbon fiber. I was. Um, it's actually like half the weight of these brass broom tube retainers. But I, I opted to use the brass ones. They're a little more low profile than this big carbon fiber tube. Um, both of them move in and out. All right, we'll basically just use tape. The sponsons were uh, probably the hardest part of the build. All right, that's what's taken me so long. I um, I actually changed up my my non-trip angle. I gave it a little bit more non-trip angle. I sanded, you know, I sanded off this, kind of gave it more non-trip angle, and uh, the bottom ride surface is basically uh, stock. That's what it calls for. But um. I think it's going to be a fast boat. The The motor goes in the motor mount right here. That's where the motor is going to be mounted. I just elongated the holes. I'm actually going to run my motor up as high as I possibly can in the boat so I can shoehorn the ESC like right in front of it. I uh, got the servo mount right here, receiver mount. Got, it's already got a pre-slotted pre stuffing tube uh, hole right there, so that makes it easy to install. Um, it's really a straightforward build, you guys. So uh, let me quit jacking my jaws. Let's quit jacking my jaws here, and um, let's start installing some goodies. All right. So um, we're going to go ahead and get the rudder mounted up. The holes are already there. I actually filled them with epoxy in case they didn't work. <laughs> I could re-drill them. So I got to re-drill this out. All right. The rudder is going to go there. Our linkage should be somewhere in here. I guess we need to go ahead and mount up the strut as well. So we can make sure our rudder linkage isn't going to impede on the, the actual strut itself. I drilled them a little tight so I could screw my screws in. I don't have to use nuts while I'm setting it up. I can pull hardware, put it back on real easy uh the first thing i do once i actually get my hardware on my boat is the first thing i do is put my my shaft in if i can put my propeller on and check make sure we're not going to hit the propeller and a full throw on the rudder all right that's like one of the main things you need to look out for when you're building a boat installing hardware like a custom type build make sure you're going to have enough room for Big diameter props or pitchy props usually a pitchy prop will actually have a longer hub So you have to take that into consideration Okay, uh, not gonna be making a whole lot of le uh, left turns with this boat, you know Possibly possibly will with our turn fins uh, With two turn fins on the boat, so we possibly will be making left turns, but we won't need full left rudder like that so i think we're going to be good even with a a bigger pitchier propeller it's going to be cutting it close but so you got your drive dog this is a 630 so it's actually kind of pitchy um i'm actually going to move my rudder bracket this bracket right here the ru rudder's held on by over to the other side all right i think that'll give me more options for prop choice So we're going to have to flip that the bracket over. Alright, so you guys see how it's made here. Okay, so I actually need to pull the pin out and flip this bracket over. Alright, so just do a little flip. Put our pin back in. Boom. Now we screw all of our hardware in from the opposite side. I'll have links to everything in the description we use today. Okay, I'll have links for everything in the description. So I like to run my screws like this if I can, you know, and then we'll cut off the extra screw once we're done, but that won't impede on our, our, uh, our throw, you know? Should give us more room for propeller options. All right. So we're using uh, 
three thirty seconds brass tube for the through hole. This will be epoxied in the boat. This capillary tube is one sixteenth outside diameter. All right, it's got a it's got an inside diameter of 0 0.08, which will house this 0 0.032 music wire. It's a three part steering linkage. Okay. So we got the through hole that's going to be epoxied into the boat. This little guy right here. The capillary tube, if I can get it to fit in there. Yep. All right. That's going to be the steering rod. Okay. And then we're going to use this wire in the capillary tube. All right. And that will attach to the servo and the rudder. That will give us some bend some flex all right and uh it's stainless steel so it's very stiff it'll be it'll be rigid rigid enough for this boat right here anyway all right so um we need to figure out where we're going to drill the hole so what i like to do is basically i got my servo in i got my my rudder on here and we're just going to basically use a, a wire to kind of eye it um, I like to, on these sm smaller servos, I don't like to run my my linkage all the way out at the end. It puts a lot of strain on the servo. So if you run your linkage a little bit closer to the center line on your servo arm, it will actually reduce the strain on the servo. And uh, servo will last longer, basically, what I've noticed anyway. Alright, so... That looks good right there. I'm going to epoxy that in. All right. Got, I'm going to leave a little bit of an angle because I kind of drilled it a little high. But that's why we're using that wire because it actually flexes, you know, capillary tube. So I'm going to go ahead and get that epoxied up. Just going to use this five minute weld. It's super easy, super simple, super fast. Okay. this fun tack right here in my little brass tube so I don't get epoxy in there all right you see that just put a little bit in my my brass tube you can use modeling clay see now I won't get epoxy in there and it'll just push right through when we're ready so let's get us a little bit of epoxy on here Hopefully you guys can see a little bit of epoxy. Boom, boom, boom. All right. You see that? And I'm actually going to push this all the way in because I don't want none of my brass tube sticking out. Well, maybe a little bit. Not much. And then I'm going to go crazy with the epoxy on the inside and leave my boat sitting up like this. So the the through hole, the brass 330 seconds through hole is all cured up, okay? I put a little bit of an angle on it to uh, meet up with the with the rudder back here. And it actually works out perfect because it meets up with the, the steering servo as well. Okay. So uh, so now we need to cut our capillary tube to fit. Alright. So I got my capillary tube in there. See how it's a nice fit. It's like perfect. This is a perfect steering setup okay all right so you can see what i got going on here i got a little piece for the end it's going to go into the easy connector right here so it cinches down nice on our on our uh steering linkage okay then i got me another piece of capillary tube that's going to go through the hole and then this side right here will have a z bend on it for the servo all right, so it's basically going to go through through the hole here. This is going to cinch down on the on the on the rudder easy connector. 
I got me a little a little run of just music wire for uh, for like a shock absorber you know it's actually got some flex if we hit something with the rudder it or it jerks the rudder out we got a little bit of flex there it'll also aid in in the bend when we got full rudder which we wouldn't have that much rudder you know it's, this boat's not going to need that much input to turn. Final answer. Final answer here. All right. That's basically what it's going to look like. All right. Final answer. So let's pull this out. And red Loctite it. Oh, that's way too freaking much. Damn, that's a waste. All right. So we're just going to put some Loctite on here. Okay. Just going to slide it back. Put a little bit of Loctite on. Okay, then I'm going to slide it, put some Loctite on this side, slide it back and forth there. Capillary tube for the end, you got to work fast, this stuff will dry quick on you. Alright, make sure it's in the right spot. That looks pretty good right there. Yep, alright, get a little bit more on it. Once this dries, it's permanent. Like I said, you can use green if you want. That's it. That's her, that, that'll give us a little bit of flex. All right, and then we'll put our Z-Bend up here. All right, so I got my, my controller on. Okay, my my arm is basically where I want it to be, to be at. I uh, got my my rudder in, a, in a, a straight position in line with the tub of the boat. That's basically where I want to run it. That'll give me some adjustability forward and back. Okay, um, got a magic marker here. <clears throat> We're gonna mark out where I need to bend. Okay, so I got it centered here. The rudder centered, double check. Get one chance at bending. So I need to put my bend right, right where this mark is, okay? So I'm gonna pull this guy here out. This is an awesome freaking steering linkage setup, you guys. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. You, you won't go. You won't regret going this route. Trust me. All right. Where's my mark? Okay. So my mark's right here. I think it's right there. All right. So I put my L bend in. Let's check it before I make my final bend so yeah yeah that's perfect go ahead and do the final bend here it's a z bend all right right there and then just bend that guy there over boom all right let's cut off the extra okay so you have to take your servo horn off and put your z bend i think i'm gonna run mine on the bottom maybe the fourth hole in all right like so boom slide your new steering linkage in the through hole boom go in your easy connector and then we're going to check for smoothness hopefully she's smooth so we tighten up our grub screw don't forget to put loctite on everything when you do your final assembly so nice nice that's perfect that's all the throw you need right there that's all the throw you need on a rigger the turn fins aid in the turn so you don't need much much rudder in a turn you know um got the capillary tube on our easy connector here cap uh music wire capillary tube and then i got a little teeny tiny bend right here on the end of my capillary tube with a z bend at the end i used uh the middle hole my servo that should be fine that's all to throw and need i can actually turn up my my gain or whatnot my travel in my remote it's only at 100 now i can go up to 150 but uh i think that's perfect man 
I'm gonna actually trim this guy right here up, like flush with the transom, so it'll it'll be like a nice clean look when we got it all finished up and painted. But uh, it's it's a it's a like I said earlier, it's it's a legit steering setup. Uh, the cost to get started with the setup, it's uh it's not cheap. It's not exactly cheap right off the the get. Um, these this capillary tube you gotta buy like a foot and a half length, and the only the only vendor I could find sells 10 at a time, and they're actually on a long boat, so they actually take a while to get, but um, it's well worth the investment. And then you're, you know, three bucks for the music wire, three bucks, four to three thirty seconds, so around $26, but once you once you get all the materials, literally, you could do several boats with this, with these materials, and, and it actually doubles as a wire drive for super light boats small boats this is the wire drive from my 120 atlas van all right uh capillary tube music wire capillary tube to a a one eighth prop shaft all right um it doubles as a as a wire drive as well so once you get it you have a wire drive option and this um steering linkage option i'll be going into this in another video with my micro my micro one eighth scale saucy shingle all right so we'll be building a wire drive for this boat i got the motor mount made i've got my rudder my rudder made for the boat okay i had to do a different style bracket so it sits on the transom vertically instead of horizontally uh working on that we're almost ready i got my turn fin bracket made everything so um i'll show you guys how to do the the wire drive in an upcoming video but uh this is how you do you know this is dr jet's steering setup for the 120 and i've uh I, I, you know i stole his idea i love this setup and i and that's why i made this video i, I recommend this setup for um 20 i mean no hell hell 12 12 inch to about 24 inch boats you know 24 inch would be pushing it with this setup so micro mini boats the second part of the build series with this this the shrimp outrigger we're going to do electronics and work on some odd and end things see you next time thanks for watching big b with ironclad rc channel where we tinker test and build rc boats